long day, I got a lot to say. It feels like I'm carrying a two ton weight. I go to see a friend. Hello, I'm Monsignor Patrick Winslow. And I am Father Matthew Cowth. And we are speaking from the rooftop. A podcast brought to you by Tan Books, in which we invite you to join our conversation out here in the open air. Where we look out upon the world around us from the rooftop of the church and share with you what we see. Makes me Hello, Father Winslow. Hello, Father Cow. I dare say we have been negligent once again. I suppose we could truthfully say we're not being neg- negligent relative to our actual tasks, but negligent about finding time to get together uh, to do this. Why that- do you always ascribe culpability to me equally? Well, because... Because I, you know, I, I could say that you're the one who's been hard to pin down. I could reveal to everyone that I think at least 70% of the culpability rests on you. But I wouldn't do that. I'll, I'll take that. But- <laughs> I'll take that. Because um, that, that just, it, 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 it sort of lends to my, to my air of being a, a hard worker. Oh, is that right? Um, and yours. Oh, all right. So it, ser- it, ser- <laughs> it serves me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no, the truth is we've been hard. I mean, it's, uh, we, we both keep very active schedules. And to get our schedules across is challenging. But that said... Do we not say to one another all the time, yes. we have to record, we have to record? Yes, we do. So you're not out, the people listening are not out of mind. However, last time we were together, we recorded one yes. and it didn't work. So now we, you can we say did it have one. I love how you said that. It didn't work. You could say, I didn't do it properly. <laughs> I wasn't going to do what you no. did to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Father... Winslow, who is normally more electronically gifted than I am, I being a Luddite and, and, uh, and challenged in that area, he had messed up the recording. However, I think I can say honestly, it was, it was um, startlingly good. It was, it was a stellar conversation. It was, it was the one that we would actually <laughs> go back and listen to. It right? was electrifying. It was electrifying. <laughs> How do we so, how do we capture that? What lightning? we talked about last time, and I think the reason we had so much fun with it, literally fun, um, is because the topic was play. And this is a sort of a mantra of Father Winslow's and, and mine to some degree, especially with the guys that are coming up through the ranks that we train in the seminary, that are young priests, etc., is that they can't become um, bores. Yeah. And... I happened to run across and what prompted our conversation last time that we'll try to represent to some degree today. Um, what, I, what I came across was a, a very striking um, text in St. Thomas Aquinas, something you would not expect to find there, which is in the Secunda Secunde, which is a, in the Summa Theologiae. It's broken up into different parts. And the Secunda Secunde is just the second part of the second part. And it's question 168, I believe, um, if you want to look it up. But it's about the fact that Anything in human discourse, human interaction, that is contrary to reason, he would consider sinful. That is to say, some anything contrary to reason that's acted upon is not aiming at the proper good. I don't mean massively sinful, but it's just, it's, it's missing the mark. And what I was surprised to find in that particular article is the example that he gave, the thing that he's talking about, is someone who's being a bore. He literally says... To lack the virtue of mirth and play, ludus, um, is to be sinful. Because you don't, not only do you not share with others um, their, in their playfulness, that gives a kind of relief to the soul, he says. He says there's two kinds of things that give relief to the soul. The body gets tired, the body needs rest. The soul, quote unquote, metaphorically, analogously gets tired, and it needs two things. One is prayer. One is contemplation, he says, is the best rest for the soul. And the other one is genuine play. And he says, therefore, that the person who lacks mirth not only doesn't share in the playfulness of another, but also takes it away from the other. Um, That kind of black hole that we encounter at times when we're trying to get 
people going mm -hmm. to to be able to enjoy each other's company and there's someone who's just over there in the corner sucking all the light out of the room yes exactly <laughs> it's usually not you or me no, right no. <laughs> we're not that, those those guys right but you know it's true um I, well first of all i am profoundly grateful for you to find or for you having found to Mystic Foundation for mm -hmm. something that I've been harping on for a while. You have, this has been your, your bailiwick. Yeah. Um, you you know, and St. Thomas, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. I just, kind of, I, I'm a little, a little less systematic, a little more charismatic. I'm a charismatic. Thomas. You come at it quicker than he does. He's got to work <laughs> through the ratsunation. <laughs> yeah, I, you just, I just jump it. right to the you end. You just see it. I yeah. just see it. So it's, it's one of these things where, especially as we get older, uh, you can kind of fall into a world weary disposition and, Oh, you know, why bother? You know, why bother with this game or this thing? Or uh, who wants to play cards? You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Where at that point, what's left? Right. Right. You know, eating and talking about your illnesses. I mean, there's nothing <laughs> left. The price of gas. Yeah. And so, so, um, you know, I think I had said to you not too long ago this past year, like, but if we get together, we need to be fun. We have to do something fun. It needs to be fun. And um, I remember you kind of reacting to that. And uh, it wasn't too long after that that you came across as a Thomas. Yeah. So it really kind of had been queued up, at least interpersonally, between you and me. Um, but that you and I have been really good at that in the arc of time. Yeah, and I think that there's two things that I think that I, I like to do with friends. One is to have the kind of conversations we're having on these podcasts. I, and that's that's more akin to contemplation. I find rest in that because if you're contemplating something, you're simply thinking about it by yourself. You're examining it, you're beholding it, you're marveling at it by yourself. When you do it with someone else, you can always get a bit higher than you can on your own. Um, and so what we're doing in a conversation is like unto that sort of prayer contemplation where you're examining something before God. And it um, enriches the friendship. And it enriches the friendship. But you can't always have a high topic. You can't even always muster yeah. the the the, uh, the jet fuel to get you out of orbit to talk about those things. Or maybe there's enough persons around where it doesn't lend itself to it. Right. You don't have the same confidences or what have you. But you can always play. Um, and that's the thing that I see even at our age, um, a number of our friends becoming more and more loath to do. They enjoyed... Previously, when we were discovering the faith and discovering the parish life and what it was like to be a priest. It was an amusing, delightful the, adventure. Absolutely. You know, and they enjoyed the conversations yeah. surrounding that. Yeah. But then as you get older, it, it, be, it, it does. It becomes about the food or the wine or the whatever. Yeah. And it's, which is great. We all love a good feast. Mm -hmm. um, but, but not it, a boring a, feast. Not a boring feast. <laughs> I don't want to. And have so, if you yet. can't get the conversation going, engaging in something that doesn't require lots of mental energy mm -hmm. that you can always that you can play with, it actually softens the, the the arena in such a way that real conversation happens. Then, therefore, naturally, without trying to say now we have to have an important conversation. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No. And I think that's wonderful because we can float between more substantive matters that really bear upon. Uh, the likes of contemplation, and then move to the mirth, the play. And when we say play, we're not talking about necessarily playing a game. That's not excluded by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. In fact, I find games to be a lot of fun. I really enjoy them. Um, but being playful with one another, uh, showing up, you know, to put it more colloquial terms, just bring your bring your personality to the equation. Bring your personality to the equation. Show up. Be yeah. present. Uh, you know, I think parents experience this with uh, teenagers, right? Yes, uh, they can yes. become a little bit stingy with their persona, yes. and I understand it. You know, that's a, those are hard set of years to kind of get through and navigate. Uh, you're trying to establish your independence, and uh, it's one thing to control, right? Is who you share your personality with, right? Who, who yourself, and so by doing that toward your parents, sometimes it's a way of just establishing your sort of autonomy. I don't have to show up in this way. I may have to be here. You know, I may be, mm. I may have to sit at this table. I may have to be in this car. I may, have, but I don't really have to you know, participate. Right. It's sort of this rebellious. I'm going to withhold attitude, exactly. which is a bit of a. It's, it's like a punishment almost. You know, you're mm. you're you're punishing someone else for having you do something, especially with kids. You see it, right? I mean, if mm. you, I think we were mentioning last time that you and I went and played top golf. 
Mm. And uh, oh, that's right, right. And Father Winslow, I, I, he won. He won the yes, game. Yes, of course. And he, he won it because <laughs> this is the kind of thing that's not like real golf. That's why you can win if you can't play real golf. Um, it's, it's a bit like darts <laughs> with a golf ball, right? You got to hit certain. And he, you, know, you can hit a perfect shot, and it catches the rim of some plastic piece. It doesn't go in, and it, I, it's just. It was a little bit frustrating for me, who's slightly competitive in the sports. I field. watched lots of YouTube videos. <laughs> so, but the, in the bay next to us was clearly uh, some parents that were trying to do something fun with their kids and just to spend some time with them. And the girl was clearly not amused. It did mm-hmm. not want to be there, etc. And at a certain point in time, she finally broke because she realized that she's there and she can only respond to so many texts to her friends and make right. so many posts. And it was actually fun. Um, and it was fun. You had to really fight and not to have a good time. her brother was having so much fun at it, yeah. her young, little younger brother, that it was becoming a little contagious. So she, get up, she gets up there and, you know, sort of moping and, and mm-hmm. complaining and hits the thing. And she had a good shot. And all of a sudden, oh, you know, it yeah. was, she was all about it. But by the end of the thing, just to watch the family interact and, and, and genuinely have a good time and she put the phone down yeah um, that's got to be hard for parents um you know we have we kind of have a built-in um cadre of friends given the fact that we've gone through seminary together we've kind of suffered and bled in the same fields together we work in the same field we and more than anything we pursue the same goal of course which is heaven which is our lord um so we it's a little easier for us on some level to have that sort of network of opportunity for 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 enjoyment for leisure for fun whereas if you're dealing with your kids um like when they're when they're little it's easy right you, you put them in a playground and let them go mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. but when do you get to enjoy them and the inhibitions are lower yeah the inhibitions are lower teenagers have lots of inhibitions Gosh, what a hard time and then you have that rebellion of trying to be independent they yeah. just it's hard for them to fight and you know it's all new to them so i get it right we've all been there but you're right. I mean, how do parents help their kids uh, put down all the defenses and just be themselves? Because to be sure, and this is the secret that the kids don't really know, is if they were just themselves, the parents would find it hard to say no to just about any request. Mm-hmm. Because when, when the kids allow their personalities to be shared, uh, their playfulness to be shared with their parents, I mean, come on. Uh, how do parents, I mean... Yeah. This is their superpower when it comes to persuading their parents Absolutely. to some end. And uh, so often they don't even realize it. Assuming, of course, that their personality when it comes out is actually an enjoyable one. <laughs> well, <that's>, uh, <laughs> one would assume. That's what it, one would hope. That's one of Jordan Peterson's big lines is it raise children that you enjoy, yeah. that you want to be around. Um, it, it was a really important point. I, was, I heard some talk that he gave. And it, it, the, the basic point was this, that, you know, Kids need friend sets, right? They need to be able to navigate those waters of school. And it's there's so much pressure on them that they gravitate to whichever group that receives them to some degree, that, it, that, that they can identify with it because it, it's sort of like these pack animal uh, scenarios in school. There's so much pressure and fear and, and I want to be part of something. And then I take that on as my own identity. And if you don't want your kid to join the wrong one, or if you want your kid to avoid that most horrible thing, which is that kind of peer loneliness at that age and not have other friends, it's the best thing you can do for them is to raise them in such a way that their personality gets developed, that they actually have the kind of character and personality that people want to be around. Yeah. Because um, then they'll have, they'll have friends. Yeah. Ultimately, you're going to be called to marriage. I mean, this will determine the pool, yeah. of, you know, from which you can draw and enter yeah. into a married life. Because if you don't have a compelling or magnetic personality of some sort, if you don't allow for yourself to come forward and take yeah. you know, away, how are you going to find someone that, in the yeah. end, will be able to go long haul yeah. with a spirit of joy? That's connection? it. You know, Chesterton was G.K. Chesterton, the great Catholic author, was. He, he loved children, and he didn't have any of his own. Um, and he would spend a lot of his time with his friends um, literally playing with their children because he found it to be the most seriousness of affairs in how serious children take their playing, in, in the right. best of sense, right? It's, oh, they are it's serious. It's so yeah. serious. Um, and I've, I've sort of found that with myself 
too, insofar as like whenever I'm in a social situation and there's kids there, for whatever reason, I always become you know the donkey that they ride and the, the thing that they climb on and the mm-hmm. person that chases them that one they want to be chased or whatever else and I'm, I'm almost 50 now and it's still the same way yeah and I think because I've, I've always enjoyed their the play their, their pension for play yeah and I want to support that I want to I want to promote that but I'm at the age too where I think to myself I wouldn't mind sitting and talking to some well, adults <laughs> <laughs> like imagine when I'm with your family yeah exactly all those kids I'm still doing the same thing I was oh, yeah. 20 years ago with those kids yeah now they're they're getting so tall yeah, that they'll they'll crush you. Yeah, but that said, you're right. Uh, it, there's something magnetic about entering into the world of a child who's just so earnestly playing. Well, you mentioned earlier it doesn't necessarily mean just playing a game. So, right. what are some other things that we could recommend and or encourage that people do when they get together? Well, I think the use of humor. Uh, I think um, the a sense of playfulness yeah right like yeah. uh you know you're gonna cook right and you're gonna prepare a meal it could be arduous and just an annoying necessity yeah. that you have to take care of to get food on the table or you can throw on some music you can have some great conversation you can very amusingly engaged in you know dividing up of tasks and responsibilities then the whole exercise becomes a playful right. exercize and isn't that much so much more so much better than right. an arduous task well you and I love to cook and I and I I think I find sometimes that when we have gotten together with a larger group it it turns into something arduous because at times and I'm just not impugning this to anyone but other people expect you to entertain them. That's like, true. Like they, they, they didn't even pay the 10 bucks to get into the well, theater. Well, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> I, wanna, I mean, if this so, is a performance art, so, I, I'm so. going to get paid. <laughs> yeah. No, I have no tolerance anymore. I, uh, you got to show up. You got to show up. You got to show up. Which means the price you of need to get is you engaged the in the food. Yeah. Like, even if you don't know how to do it. Yes. Um, I don't particularly, and there are times in which it's just fuel. Fuels, you know, food mm-hmm. is just fuel. But when if I'm going to take the time to get together with my friends, I want to think about something interesting relative to the food. I want to I want to experiment a little bit. I want to have some fun mm-hmm. with it a bit and get everyone involved in doing it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But not that I'm going to spend the entire day doing that. But it it is, and that's one of the things that we love about Fun McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Um, that man does not mind spending an awful lot of time in the kitchen. No, um, did, I ever tell you, did I ever tell you about the salad? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh yeah, get this. So I'm uh, with my sister uh, Deborah and her husband Topher and the kids. We're in D.C. I think it was when I was studying canon law, and Father McCarthy came into town, and we went over to Eastern Market, which is around the corner from where they live. So we were going through and we we're getting items to make a nice dinner. Well, we had picked up I don't know some beef and for steaks and things, and then we picked up some other items. And we finally got to the pastries and desserts, and I think we were all loaded. We had a lot of bags. And uh, I said to him, I think we're done, right? We're done. He goes, no. And he points back to the meat counter. So we go over to the meat counter, and he has the man pull up a whole pound of beef. And I look at him, and I said, Mac, we got stuff in the bag. We just got steaks. I think we have a lot of them. He said, no, no, this is for the salad. <laughs> he wanted to make a carpaccio. I said, a salad. I said, you got a pound of meat for the salad? Yeah. Well, it, just watching him go, though, is uh, that's worth the admission. Well, this is, this is, remember, this is the man who made those insane cowboy uh, pork oh, chops yeah. for high tea. For high tea, right? It was tea. Right. Once I expected, discuss- you know, crumpets. Or, I think yeah. once he learned that tea involved food, he was all in. He was all into the tea. Yeah. That's true. It's true. Well, and mind you, he's not a glutton in the sense that it, it's not like he just he just loves the It's a art fascination. Of doing it. uh, it's, it's a goal. It's, yeah. yeah, no, it's wonderful. It's actually contagious, right? Because you want to get into it. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. I remember the one time <laughs> he prepared something. I think we were on a skiing vacation. And he started laughing as we were about to sit down. So what's what's funny, Matt? He said, "Look at this table. Yeah, there's a pound of butter hidden in here." 
<laughs> somehow there was a full pound of butter hitting all the ingredients that we were. You know, eat. last time he was he was here just a few weeks ago. He was at the seminary, you know, and the sisters were having uh, a retreat for all the young women in the diocese that were thinking about a vocation. So imagine there's a hundred girls over there, mm. and uh, we just gotten back um, from making a few errands and visiting a few people. And he asked to stop at the store. And he said, sure, I'll pull over. And, and he said, I just have to pick a couple of things up. So he comes back in with, he goes, you have butter at the seminary, right? And like, we have like, you know, 100 pounds of butter right. at the seminary. He's like, oh, no, I only need like four. <laughs> <laughs> For tea, probably. Well, what it was, was he decided to make um, chocolate chip cookies oh. for the girls. Um and, in the big mixer. And it was post-lunch, right? So we had had pizza for lunch. And I am i don't like to do anything, right? I, I, and it's one of the reasons I don't like to eat lunch because yeah. it's, I get so tired. Uh-huh. Um, and I've been going all morning. And so I brought the stuff up to the kitchen. And I thought he would make them at some point, right? Well, he mm-hmm. just began right after lunch making cookies. I'd go back in there two hours later. And the place is its just everything's I, everywhere. I can imagine. And he's making hundreds of cookies i can imagine so i ended up helping I, him. he loves that i mean oh, yeah i ended up because helping him now so you have fun. big equipment right because it's yeah, an industrial kitchen equipment. so you have big equipment yeah. and it's cooking i mean that, that that's two worlds that yeah. come together for him yeah. I mean, he loves big big machinery for that's toys true. and then cooking well but this is all i mean we're not just telling stories that amuse us about our friend but uh it's it's just examples of how he he brings his, he brings personality, his personality his character and it's unique yeah. and it's makes you love him all the more yep. um and it's so playfully contagious and yeah. delightful and and that really is kind of what we're getting after in terms of showing up or being you know entering into play it's it, there, there's always the possibility of actually playing a game sure which you know i like to do because i like to have a, a little something to look forward to i think competition especially for a group of guys is fun yeah um because a lot of uh you know um, teasing and razzing absolutely happens absolutely. around that and that that is an opportunity for us to sharpen our wit mm-hmm. and um, you know to draw on some um, some history as well yep. and it just becomes a great centerpiece around which to have a lot of fun and just to interact well imagine the diocese now and Jim Kelly will love this as someone who works here at the diocese um, you know he's been a euchre player for Mm-hmm. A gazillion years. That's his great, greatest love, perhaps, after our Lord and his wife. I'm not sure the children come before you, but they probably <laughs> could do. Um, but he's been playing forever. And Euchre is kind of a Midwest game. Mm-hmm. It's been fun now because we have so many people in Chancery and friends that get together for, get together Euchre. for Euchre. Mm-hmm. So much so that the sisters are now on it. Mm. They play Euchre. The seminarians play Euchre. Everyone's playing Euchre. Are they enjoying it? Uh, absolutely. Remember Topher? Topher came and taught so many of the seminarians yes. a couple years ago. And it's great My because brother-in-law. you can just walk in. There's a game of Euchre going. You can mm. step in, step out, whatever else. And guys are making food. or It's just, again, one of those, one of those ways to, to slightly take the attention off. Now we have to do X. It, you just relax by playing a game, in this case a real game. Yeah that you don't have to think about tremendously. You don't have to concentrate so much on it. But it takes the focus off any one person Mm -hmm. that you kind of lose yourself in it and conversation just begins to happen a bit more freely. Right. Right. It's true. It's true. Well, I'm I'm glad that we've been able to recap a little of our lost segment. You know, it went into the, the mist. It did. It did. This one wasn't as, it wasn't as electrifying. Well, it I'm joking. I don't remember the last one. <laughs> I, I think no, it's true. No, I think we honestly, only get better with age, Winslow. Yeah, you know, I never know. Um, <laughs> I never know. I can't really depend on much, you know, from year to year. Mm. I, I can't depend on my memory. Yeah. yeah. I mean that it's it's a it's a horrible thing. I, I'm trying to get my brothers and sisters to join me in a class action shoot against my father for genetic betrayal. <laughs> Basically, we're just going to we're going after the inheritance early. Good, yeah, good, good. That's the plan. No, unfortunately, he still has his memory. <laughs> yeah, I wish he wouldn't. It's a selective one, though. Sure, sure. Oh, boy, oh boy. Well, that's good. We keep threatening to get him on here. Well, listen, before we go, yes, I have to tell you something. That I think you would be fascinated by. I was recently in Ortese, which is a city in the Dolomites in Italy. I was doing some hiking and um, a little vacation before retreat. And I came across a, an artisan there who's kind of of the old school. And it's a fascinating uh, 
method that he has that is so homespun. But his statues are incredibly beautiful, but they look as if they're three, four, five hundred years old. I said, what do you do? Because it's painted wood. They're carved, of course, um, sculpted, as you will, and if you will. And, and then he does the same method that our painters are working on our Polytech now are doing, which is a on, on sized wood or on wood that's kind of been glued and, and aged. Then you put gesso on it, which is kind of a crushed stone, like an old cast sort of a thing. Um, and then you put bole, which is a, a clay. And upon that, you can gild or you can paint, um, and that's what they do on these statues. Most statues, polychrome statues, are done in that fashion in the old school. But what he does is he puts the gesso on. So imagine a, a, this pasty white mm-hmm. gesso that typically on an old board or a polytic or an icon or whatever, you want super smooth, no pinholes, no cracking. He does the opposite. So he'll do the gesso, and then he takes the statue, and he puts it in his shower. <laughs> What? He does. <laughs> and he throws water all over it, hot, then cold, throws it in the sun, throws it in the freezing cold, throws it back. He keeps alternating its temperature control. He's trying to and distress and, and, the and, surface? And, 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 and water, yeah, and he distresses it. And it is gorgeous. Really? Absolutely beautiful. Does it give it an antique look? Is that... It does. Now, I would imagine that when persons were originally making these statues, you, you think to yourself, right. in the in the 1300s, were we trying to go for an antique look? No. And what was that looking like? <laughs> you wanted to go, you know, new, fresh. Because I mean, that's the right, thing. That right, was the impossible right, right, thing. Right. Yeah. Having but, something uh, to look old was probably a, a very easy thing to come by. It, it was, and it still is, actually. It's, it's pretty simple to, to obtain the gold in Italy still and in France. Um, and I got to watch some of the gilding going on there, which was really... They use a squirrel tail, and you take the static from your hair or a little bit of um, oil from your face to grab the these super fine sheets of wow. gold, the twenty three karat gold, um, and lie down and watch this uh, watch this gilder do it so fast. It was beautiful, brilliant work. Um, so I've got some new connections now for nice. statuary. Yeah. Well, heaven knows we always need those. Well, good. But before you go, oh, before I go, I have nothing on the top of my head. Let me see. I I don't know about anyone else, but uh, here down the southeast, especially in Charlotte, uh, our our June was cold. Yeah, and Memorial Day was horrible. So having any real summer kind of just started for us. I mean, we had basically an extended spring, but normally we start summer in earnest in the beginning yeah, of that's June. True. We had no June, so I'm just starting to get out and do more summer things kind of uh, doing some lawn work at my parents' house down here. And uh, it's hard. Because it's over. It, it's, mean in the heat, you mean? In my body. <laughs> I, I mean, I, when you know they say you're going to be dig- digging ditches? That terrifies me, the thought of it. Just, you know, digging up a little hole for a plant, yeah. for a flower pot or something, is it's unbelievable. Of course, the heat is, you know, now we're up there in the 90s yep, 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 and it's yep. oppressive. I am just stunned how absolutely exhausting that doing that type of gardening. It's not really gardening as much as landscaping, I think. Mm. Right? Because I can mow the lawn anytime and I can do the, you know, the weed whacking with the with the weed whacker machine and things like that. But it's the planting, <laughs> right? It's the bending over and plucking. I remember when my, my mother was my age. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember her making a comment about how hard it was to get up off the floor or something. I, and I remember thinking to myself, you know, here I, I was half her age, thinking, really? Are we not exaggerating a little bit? You're just getting up off the floor. Yeah. Right? I can do that. Like, up, now. down, up, down, up, down. This is not hard. Yeah. You're not now, doing, and you're not doing burpees. No, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm just getting up. Now... It's an extreme sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I've got to grab on to something. (laughs) And then if I come up too quickly, I get lightheaded and I feel like I'm going to fall down and faint. And, of course, in the oppressive heat, this is unbelievable. Yeah. When I was a kid, I remember I always worked outside and Mm -hmm. odd jobs and and, uh, whatever I could make money doing, whether it's shoveling snow or raking leaves or Mm -hmm. chopping wood or digging ditches. And I loved working outside. Of course, you're indefatigable when you're a kid. Yeah. And... I remember digging this ditch that really did break me. This guy paid me to dig this huge ditch at his house. 
And after a few days of just nothing but straight digging oh, in this no. gravelly dirt. And that's when um, you were young and he said, strong. He said, yeah, exactly. He came over to me and he was a lawyer. And he says, you remember what this feels like? Because unless you, unless you get that education you need, you're going to be doing it the rest of your life. It's a good lesson. It was a good lesson. Yeah. That said, I do... I've, I've kind of gone in the other direction to some degree. Mm-hmm. I, I do admire so much the men and the women that sort of have their whole life given over to um, more physical, physical labor. labor. Yeah. Um, especially now that I get older and I'm not used to it anymore and can't do it the way that these people do it. I've, I watched so many of them when I was in when I was doing that hiking in Italy. I mean, they still so many of those places. It's too the hills are too steep to cut the grass they need the grass to feed mm-hmm. their animals um and they're still taking out sickles wow i saw a guy that must have been 75 you know burnt as leather um just out there in the field swinging 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 i went on my hike come back he's still swinging amazing i think i'd have swung three times and i'd have been going <laughs> to the chiropractor um so in some sense it's kind of yeah if you hadn't stopped they say lotions in the motion right and and part of our difficulty is we don't do it Right, getting out there and doing it not just once because I've got a hobby of planting a few things, but actually engaging that. I'm trying to get into that a bit more myself and make sure I get a lot more physical labor in as opposed to going to exercise or going to the gym. I, I live on 90 acres. I'm trying to work outside more. Well, that's great. I mean, I find just bending down and picking up a piece of debris, I mean, that's half a workout right there. <laughs> I remember, I got to say this, when we were at St. Thomas, we used to go to that gym. You remember that? Oh, yeah. And so I have a different mentality about a gym than Father Winslow does. Yeah. Um, and so we would go there together in the evening sometimes, and, and well, we had that first year together. Mm-hmm. And I come back, I'm, I'm, I'm a mess, right? And, mm-hmm. and we're there for 45 minutes, whatever else. And I come up to you on the machine, and you're doing the elliptical machine. And I'm destroyed and whatever else. I'm like, are you ready? He goes, yeah, I just finished up my, my show. And, <laughs> and you were on that thing. And I thought it was doing the work for you. It's like you didn't break it, a sweat. <laughs> it was not. It was hard work. But I had to finish my show. That's right. It was great. All right. Well, great to be with you all. And sorry about the uh, the delay. I um, will promise to keep Father Kauth a pace. Please do. I will do my I best. Need much assistance. Pray for me. God bless you all. All right. Take care. Now. Ciao. Makes me wanna scream from the rooftop to the screen. Thanks for listening to this episode of From the Rooftop. For updates about new episodes, special guests, and exclusive deals for From the Rooftop listeners, sign up at rooftoppodcast.com And remember, for more great ways to deepen your faith, check out all the spiritual resources available at tanbooks.com And we'll see you again next time from the rooftop. Rooftop.